The girl quickly offered Jin Hyuk to collaborate with the team to share the risks. Friendly as the girl seemed, Jin Hyuk sensed something unjust. He activated his eye of truth and saw her stats. Jin Hyuk was extremely interested in the girl's commune skills, which made one appear friendly to any stranger. This would be a great help when he had to deal with that winged girl, so he agreed to work with them. Friendly, they introduced themselves to each other. The leading girl grabbed Jin Hyuk's arm and activated her commune skills, asking Jin Hyuk which floor he had climbed to. Jin Hyuk flinched, but knowing that it was her skills, he pushed her away. He warned the group that the labyrinth changes at fixed points in time, and when they were still confused, the labyrinth quaked forcefully. It was extremely dangerous for everyone else, but it was nothing for Jin Hyuk. Learning that they couldn't escape the labyrinth, they were all desperate, blaming Jin Hyuk for not warning them earlier. Jin Hyuk couldn't care less. He bluntly said that he didn't ask them to follow him, and the consequences they faced would be of their own ill intentions. One of the boys was about to attack Jin Hyuk when a gigantic monster appeared and finished him. When the group froze in fear, Jin Hyuk attacked the monster vigorously and quickly gained the hidden stat. Jin Hyuk had gained a hidden stat called Gap, which narrowed the gap in battles with stronger opponents but widened when fighting weaker ones. He'd already endured the Minotaur's attack thousands of times in the past, and his body had memorised all of the attack patterns. Jin Hyuk was a veteran, so no matter how powerful the attack was, it was useless if it didn't hit him. During his fight with the Minotaur, Jin Hyuk deliberately allowed himself to be injured because he believed that a few drops of blood were well worth the increase in hidden stats. He intentionally let himself get hit to improve his strength, Meanwhile, the rest of the group was hiding and trying to find a way out. They didn't want to die, but Jin Hyuk noticed their intentions and interrogated them about why they weren't fighting. Suddenly, the maze changed and they moved to another scene. The group began to argue and wanted to escape the labyrinth because it was dangerous. Jin Hyuk offered to help them find the exit, but they had to stay in the maze for at least 30 days and nothing was free. If they wanted to go with him to the exit, they had to pay him coins. The forum exploded with a piece of news about the Hall of Fame. A player successfully made the world's first 10 plus refinement to their item. And of course, that person was our main lead, Jin Hyuk in the maze. After ripping off the two followers, Jin Hyuk opened the artifact exchange interface and got himself a deck of tarot cards, an ancient bronze key, a wooden wagon wheel piece, and some lottery refinement scrolls. These are the kinds of items that other players wouldn't even take a look at but Jin Hyuk knew how to make the most of even the trashiest items. He quickly combined three items to make an S-level Wheel of Fortune. With the help of the Lucky Wheel, he maxed out his luck. He took out the lottery scrolls and used them on his dagger, easily refining it with his full-on look. Fast forward to ten days later, the two followers had already turned hopeless from the hell they were currently in, but Jin Hyuk was taking everything in stride, desperate to know that it would take their guild three weeks to rescue them. The two wanted to take the chance when Jin Hyuk was sleeping to unalive him. The young man had planned to assassinate Jim, but Hana stopped him because even though Jin Hyuk was sleeping, his reaction speed was incredible, and he would likely wake up the moment he was attacked and counter-attack. Hana had intended to use the stinger of a giant zucchini wasp, a lethal poison that could kill 100 trolls with a single drop to finish him off while they were eating. Hana secretly put poison in the food, but Jin Hyuk knew what she was up to. When the two of them turned their heads, he switched the food with the young man's. As expected, he ate the poisoned food and passed away. Furthermore, Jin Hyuk discovered that they were secretly broadcasting. He reported it to the system, and the viewers were immediately punished by being kicked out of the broadcasting room and banned from watching any videos for a month. Hannah's punishment was even more severe. When she received the news, the Minotaur appeared. Hannah believed that Jin Hyuk would always protect her as he had done before, but this was not the case. The 240-hour collaboration had ended, and Jin Hyuk had learned her communication skills and no longer needed her. Nevertheless, Jin Hyuk continued to attack the Minotaur until it brought out its final skills, the level 10 berserk state, threatening to shred Jin Hyuk apart. It attacked him, but Jin Hyuk had been improving as well. He fended off its attack and proactively counter-attacked it. Noticing that Jin Hyuk was smiling in such a dangerous fight, the girl was speechless and frightened. During the fight, Jin Hyuk had already gotten his gap stat increased to 57. When the Labyrinthos was confident that it could beat Jin Hyuk in one last punch, the explosion ended and it was suspended for 24 hours. Jin Hyuk's gap stat is now enough for him to narrow down 19 levels compared to his opponents. In the next 20 days, Jin Hyuk continued farming on the Labyrinthos and reached his target of 100 gap stats before leaving. 
Jin Hyuk spared Park Hanna's life for the Graham Ring, the most precious artifact available on the first floor, and an evil labour contract. Jin Hyuk fused two of his skills to make the stigma of the soul, a skill that bound the stigma target to fully obey the caster, and used it on Park Hanna. With that, Park Hanna became the first intern at Jin Hyuk's company. Hanna and Jin Hyuk became the first people to clear the labyrinth. Their accomplishment video will be broadcast in the Hall of Fame tomorrow. As a reward, each player will receive 5,000 coins, but Jin Hook took Hannah's coins because she was his intern and had to obey his orders. Jin Hook is now the player with the most coins on the server. He ordered Hannah to return and bring him Bram's ring within three days. Jin Hook decided to find his old game friends. They met at a cafe and introduced themselves again. The girl was named Yu Yunhua, and the man was named Lee Tai Min. Jin Hook felt comfortable with them because they were very sociable and would be good friends with each other. The two told Jin Hook what had happened in the past month, including the Awakening Association's testing to classify players. Those who did not meet the requirements failed and could not go to the second floor, but those with above F score could pass and would be flooded with offers to join guilds. Today, Jin Hyuk and Hana went to be tested and they met Hana's older brother Park Ha Jin to copy his skills. Jin Hook had to maximise the hostility between the two. After easily knocking down the enraged guild member, Jin Hook met Kim Kitai, the guild's head whose level is over 20. He challenged Kim on the fact that his subordinate was providing Korean ginseng to China and mentioned the remedy to ginseng's side effects to prevent the public's eyes. Kim established a blackout barrier around him and Jin Hyuk. Jin Hook's companions were very worried and rushed to help, but Jin Hyuk was all calm inside. Jin Hook offered the information about the last ingredient in exchange for access to Kim's guild's ten dungeons. Kim, although very sceptical, accepted the offer. When he wanted to attack Jin Hyuk to threaten him a bit, Jin Hook destroyed his barrier and got out easily. That Jin Hook easily got out shocked everyone, and he was able to max the hostility between him and the guild members, thus successfully copying his skill. Shallow breathing, he moved on to do the prowess test. To the officer's shock, Jin Hook walked confidently to the middle grade test stone and cut it in half. He threatened the officer not to post his result until one week later. Coming out, he received the gram ring from Park Hanna after lying to his two friends about his ranking. He headed home while planning on taking the dungeon test on the first floor's only ruin, a domain that no one has ever cleared. Jin Hook went to the ruins of the mountain, but as an f rank player he couldn't enter alone and had to register as a porter. When Jin Hyuk checked out other players' stats, a friendly porter gave him a quick nudge, reminding him to hurry up and hand out the water and ice to their team. Jin Hyuk noticed that these players had the Zion Guild symbol on their armour, so he decided to use his good communication skills to try and make friends with them. Among them was the youngest daughter of a fancy European family, Laurentia Teresa. She was super famous in Europe and was a level 29 player. To learn some cool new skills, Jin Hyuk had to save Teresa from a dangerous spot. Now let's talk about Chun Hwa's gang. They accidentally triggered the ruined security system by smacking the Guardian sentry, and guess what? It woke up a sleeping bomb. When that bomb woke up, it called in some Guardians to guard the ruins. They only had ten minutes left, and there were two choices. Run away and leave the non-fighters behind, or keep fighting with no backup. Chun Hwa decided to keep going because they had St. Teresa with them, and they couldn't start over again. But awakening those Guardians was super serious and scary, and it had Chun Hwa's crew worried. The leader quickly got his team ready to take on the ruins guards to make sure they didn't lose too many folks. He told one of his team members to give up on the solo players. Those solo players were in big trouble with the knights, but Teresa came to the rescue. She rushed over and saved them. Meanwhile, Jin Hyuk had just saved a nice uncle's life and he was battling another knight. But he didn't want to defeat it and level up, so he held back. When Teresa got there, she saw Jin Hyuk with a knife near the uncle and thought he was trying to hurt him. So she got the man out of there and pointed her sword at Jin Hyuk. They started fighting because Teresa didn't hear Jin Hyuk's explanation. He had no choice but to defend himself. Finally, when he managed to capture her, the uncle explained the misunderstanding. After that, they had a friendly chat. Jin Hyuk offered to go with Teresa into the ruins, since they both wanted something from the same place. Teresa agreed, but this meant she had to leave her guild temporarily. The guild said she could go, but she had to be back before their main quest began. Jin Hyuk also volunteered to join her, all in the name of love. As they entered Peter's oath, both Teresa and Jin Hyuk got an indirect message from the boss. Teresa was sure that Boss Master had noticed their presence, but Jin Hyuk seemed overly confident, thinking the boss acknowledged only him because he knew all about the ruin. With a puzzled expression, 
Teresa turned to Jin Hyuk and asked, What should we do? Jin Hyuk had a plan. Let's try drawing out the undead monsters by showing off your divine powers, he suggested. Acting on his idea, Teresa unleashed the undead creatures, much to their surprise. But their newfound challenge was far from over. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.